All right, happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Today I'm gonna show you a few different nails that are maybe not your shamrocks and clovers and all of that kind of stuff, but it's gonna be some fun designs that you can use for your um, St. Patty's Day nails. And then also these techniques are gonna be good for year round. So for doing other designs, incorporating other colors, but we're gonna do some nails that were kind of inspired by the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So let's get into our demo today. So I've already gone through and prepped all of the nails. I've got a lot to show you, so I wanted to um, get right into the application, but just really quick for my prep, all I did was push back the cuticles, remove the shine from the natural nail using our 150 grit file or our medium arbor band, um, cleanse the nail with our swipe, and I've done two coats of protein bond on the nail. So our nails are ready to go. We're gonna be sculpting with our Synergy hard gel today. Okay, so I'm gonna start by putting my form on. I always put that little tab on the back, pinch my forms together nice and even. And I'm gonna do a little bit more of an almond kind of a shape. So I'm gonna pinch the end of the form a little bit more at the end there too. Get that right up underneath. I'm gonna show you two nails today and then I'll finish the design up for you and we'll show you some over the top designs as well. Okay, so we're gonna start by sculpting. Got a little bit of an edge there. All right, so I'm going to start with my clear sculptor on this nail. I'm going to just build out my extension. Yeah, so I'm going to come in with a little bit of that clear sculptor, just connecting that right to the natural nail. I'm squeezing out a little bit right through that line. And then I'm going to start to, I stopped squeezing, but I'm just going to start to kind of feather that product down to the length that I want. Okay. Now you are welcome to just use the precision applicators. I usually like to come back with my gel brush. And I like to have a little mixing tile there just to help me keep my gel brush nice and clean. So I'm gonna use my gel brush. I'm gonna come in on the sides and I'm gonna just draw that product right up into that little corner there. Make sure that everything is connected. And then I'm gonna come back in and clean up that edge. Okay. Keeping my brush clean, using my mixing tile as I'm working. Same thing on the other side. I like to turn my brush around on this side. I was kind of working here and then here. Same thing over here. Turn your brush, pull back so that product comes right up into that corner. You can see how nice and tight that comes right up in there. Okay. And then same thing, use the edge of my brush to just pull forward. And just clean up that line. Just touch up that little edge there. Okay, I also want to check and make sure did I connect my product up to that natural nail? And it looks like I did. We're going to go into the light. I'm going to freeze this into place for 30 seconds. If you're working on both hands, you can freeze one hand in the light while you're working on the other. So freezing it is going to take 30 seconds. A full cure is always going to be a minute but 30 seconds will be enough to get to our next coat. Okay, so we have our first layer cured. Now I'm gonna come in with my base gel. I'm gonna be doing a dimensional nail and I'm gonna use some clears and um, uh, I'm gonna use some clear over the top. So that's why I'm gonna use my clear base gel. If you were doing, say, a concealer color and you wanted an opaque color, you could use your concealer pink or peach base. But for this nail, I'm going to use my clear base. Okay, I'm just going to pick up a small amount of that. I'm going to brush that from cuticle to free edge and making sure that I cap right through that connection. So right where my product and my nail come together, I want to make sure that I do get a good seal there. So I always go through just to make sure to connect that and then I'll just kind of blend that out through the rest of the extension. Okay. Same thing, we're gonna go back into our light for a 30 second freeze. Okay, our nail is set. So now at this point, I'm gonna take off my form 
And the reason that I take my form off is if you're doing any colors that are opaque over the nail, you want to make sure that um, the product is curing from the top down, but then also from the bottom up. If we were to do an opaque color and we leave the form on, what's going to happen is it's only going to be able to cure, the light is only going to get through from the top down, and then from the bottom up, it might still be uncured underneath. So that's why we do that clear extension rather than say an opaque colored or maybe a concealer color, just so we get that cure all the way through. Okay, so for our next step, I'm gonna take my mixing tile. I'm gonna clean off any extra gel that was on there from before. And we are gonna mix some really pretty colors today. Okay. So for this first nail, this is gonna be our green nail. So I pulled a whole bunch of different greens from our collection. We've got our emerald green, apple, incredible green, and one of our confettis, hopefully you guys still have this, is the green juice, okay? So what I'm gonna start with is a little bit of my Build Pink gel. And when I'm mixing colors, I like to use the Build Pink because I feel like the pink just brightens everything up a little bit. You can use your Flex gel, you can use your Build, whichever product you wanna work with that day. I personally like to use the Build Pink. So I'm gonna take a good amount of that and put that onto our mixing tile. And I'm gonna start with my emerald green. Now, emerald green is a solid glitter. So basically what it is, it's a silver glitter, but then it has a green coating on it. So it's gonna give you really good solid coverage, okay? I get a lot of questions about, can I use, is it, you, can you use too much of this? Is too much a good, or too much not a good thing? And the answer is, yeah, you can use too much of it. The reason that I say you can use too much of it is because being a solid glitter, what can happen is if you just use that solid glitter, sometimes if you put too much in, that light doesn't always get through to cure it all the way through. That's why I always like to add other glitters to my mixes. So Apple and Incredible Green, these aren't a solid silver glitter with a colored coating. These are actually a glitter that the light will get through, okay? So when you mix that in with your solid glitters, you're gonna be able to cure this all the way through and you're gonna get a good solid cure. Okay, so I'm gonna mix a couple of those different colors in here. And I really like these two because you're gonna to start to see, I have my greens in there, but the way that those glitters reflect light is you're actually gonna see a little bit of um, gold to that. Okay, so I'm gonna mix that in. You're gonna see a little bit of green and gold. And then I'm also gonna mix a little bit of our confettis. Okay, now at this point, I feel like I'm probably gonna need to add more of my gel because I think it's gonna get too thick at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit more before I even start mixing that up. Okay. So I'm gonna mix that in. I'm just gonna start to press that glitter down into my gel and then we're just gonna smooth that over my mixing tile. So this is gonna combine all of your colors really well. It's gonna get all those glitters mixed together and you can see as I'm mixing, I'm not bouncing my mixing or my um, spatula. You want to make sure that you're keeping it smooth so that any air bubbles that may be in there get pressed out. If you start bouncing your mixing knife, then that's going to actually add air bubbles to it. So we want to make sure to keep those air bubbles out. All right. I think this is just a little bit thicker than what I wanted it. So I'm gonna come back with my Flex. So Flex is our thinnest gel in the Synergy line. And if I wanna thin out product, I'm gonna use that because this is gonna give it a little bit more self-leveling. Okay, so I'm just mixing a little bit more of that Flex in there just to kind of loosen it up a little bit, give it a little bit more chance to self-level rather than being so thick and kind of chunky feeling. Okay, so now at this point, I'm definitely feeling like my product is just kind of softening a little bit and it's gonna be more the consistency that I wanna work with. And when I was thinking about this design, I started thinking about Chicago where they color the river. So we're just gonna make a little bit of a green river down our nail. And I'm just gonna just kind of randomly place 
that product. It doesn't have to be any specific area. Just kind of let it flow where you want it. Just kind of let that product flow. And I feel like I didn't get too many of my confettis in there. So I'm just going to come in and pick up a couple just to give them a little bit more dimension in there. Let's put one right up in there. You guys, you can place them wherever you want. You can just let them randomly fall however you want your design to come out. If you want them to be a little bit more visible, got a random one there, just place them right on the surface rather than down into your product. But I kind of like that dimension, some up on the top layer and then some down into the product. Okay, so I think, I think I like how that one turned out. Let's go ahead and put that into the light. We're just gonna freeze that for just a quick 30 seconds and then we'll move on to our next, next layer. Okay, so our green river down our nail is cured out. Next two things I'm gonna use, because it's St. Patty's Day, we got the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I'm gonna use a little bit of our star sand because star sand has kind of a multicolor reflection. So I really like that one. And then I'm also gonna use our Lime Icy Mylar. And I like how this one reflects because it's got the green to it, but then you can also kind of see when it reflects in the light, you get a little bit of that gold. Okay, so I'm gonna take out a little bit of that right onto my tile. And you can see I kind of run it between my fingers. That way it breaks up the pieces a little bit. So then I can kind of pick and choose which pieces I like to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. Again, I'm using my Build Pink. I'm gonna take a little bit of that and I'm just gonna put this kind of in my empty spaces just to fill in a little bit of those areas again you guys it's not you don't have to be perfect it doesn't have to have a whole lot of rhyme or reason we're just gonna be placing product in there so I'm gonna take a little bit of my star sand and just kind of drop that down in there wherever it falls it falls if it gets up on top of the green that's just fine too it's just all going to start to kind of blend together. I don't necessarily need straight lines or crisp lines. I just want this to all kind of flow and blend together. So again, just filling in those spaces. And then I'll come in and pick up some of my Mylar pieces and just tuck those down in there as well. Now if you feel like maybe you're uh, mylar is not quite sticking and you maybe need a little bit more gel in there go ahead and pick up a little bit more and then you can add your mylars on top of that we're just kind of layering in our design here now when you're placing your mylars it's kind of deceiving because it doesn't really look like a whole lot at this point but once you cap that nail it's going to really give it that great dimension it's gonna look kind of jewels, kind of like jewels on the nail. All right, I think we're good. Maybe just a little bit more here and there. And maybe just a little bit more up into the side here. Now, when you're placing your mylars, don't worry if they're kind of poking up a little bit. It's okay. You know, you kind of want to try to flatten them out a little bit if you can. But if there's something poking up, we're going to cap this whole nail. And so that's going to seal that in anyways. So don't worry too much. Don't try to flatten everything out perfect. Anything that still pokes up after you put your um, clear over the top, it's going to file off anyways. So at this point, I'm going to cure this nail all the way out for 60 seconds. Okay, so that nail is fully cured out and we'll go ahead and cap with our clear. So again, I'm using the Build Pink. So it's a clear, um, but it does have a slight pink tint to it. You can, again, use whichever clear you prefer. You can use the Build Pink, you can use the Build. Again, Flex, like we were using before, that is a little bit more self-leveling. Um, so if you're working on just one nail at a time, you can definitely use that. 
but be careful if you try to do more than one nail at a time because the flex might be a little too thin and it might run a little bit too much for you. So I tend to like to stick to the build or even the clear sculptor if that's a little bit more your preference. So just capping this in clear, or sorry, build pink, and just making my way all the way to that free edge. Grab a little bit more product here. Just making sure to cap everything. I am also kind of, as I work, I turn the nail so that I can see from the sides. And I'm gonna come back in and I'm just gonna pull a little bit of that gel back up into my arch to make sure that I'm building up my arch really well. All right, so again, I'm looking from the side to see where my arch is and I feel like my product is right where I need it now. So I will pop that back into the light and again, a full cure of 60 seconds. Okay, so that nail is completely done all the way through. Um, we'll swipe to take off that tacky surface. We'll file that when we're all done here, but I'm gonna go on to our next nail, okay? Before I do that, I'm still gonna need to use my mixing tile for this next nail. So what I'm gonna do you know, you're a nail tech, you're spending lots of money to make money here. So we don't want to throw our money down the drain. So I'm going to take all of this gel that I already mixed up. I'm not going to waste it. What I am going to do is I have a jar that I put in kind of whatever I've mixed for the day. So I actually have a jar from a couple of nails ago and it's already got some gold in there. So I'm actually going to take my green. It's going to seem weird, but I'm going to mix that right in with what's already in there. So this is, like I say, it's my catch-all jar. I'm just gonna mix all of that together and that's gonna be my new color. So now when your clients come in and they're maybe not quite sure what they want on their nails, I can show them my mix or my catch-all and that's kind of the, the color of the day, okay? It's one of those colors that I'm probably never gonna be able to re, you know, reduplicate or mix up again, but you can kind of see that it all comes together and that's actually a really pretty color now. Okay, so kind of a gold and kind of a champagne -y kind of color. Okay, so as you work, just keep adding your colors to that and then your clients will love it. Okay, so let's clean this off. And we'll get going on our next nail. So our next nail is gonna be our pot of gold. Okay, and this is going to be a really gold, vibrant, bright kind of a nail. And we are going to use our little gold coins. Okay, they're really just our gold, gold confettis, gold polka dots. But to me, they look like gold coins. Okay. All right, so we're going to be using those. We're also going to make a, or a gold glitter mix. Now, those of you that were lucky enough to get the crypto, that glitter that we had sold that limited edition that's going to work really great for this design so you're welcome to use that if you weren't one of the lucky ones that grabbed that i'm going to show you how to mix a similar color it's not going to be exact but it's going to be similar okay so again we're going to start with our build pink okay, i'm going to take a little bit of that onto my mixing tile and then we're gonna start with, again, so I've got my different variety here. I've got Shimmering Sand, which is kind of a champagne-y kind of a color. Dark Gold, which is a nice bright yellow gold. And then we've got Fortune, which is a really pretty, it's got a lot of kind of a hologram um, kind of shimmer to it, okay? So let's start, actually I'm gonna start with my Dark Gold. And again, the dark gold is one of those glitters that is a silver glitter with a colored coating. So you wanna make sure that you're mixing something else in with it to break up the light, to break it up so that it's gonna cure all the way through. Same thing with the shimmering sand. That's another solid glitter, okay? Then you've got your fortune, because we're gonna make our fortune. And that one's gonna be one to help kind of break up that color a little bit too, or break up the light a little bit. Okay. Now, one of my favorites, if you're not sure that it's a solid glitter or if it's going to be a glitter that's going to let light through, I like to mix in our diamond dust. Diamond dust isn't going to change the color of your glitter mix. It's just going to add that 
iridescence to it, and it's also gonna help it cure better all the way through, okay? Because it's gonna let that light all the way through the nail. So we're gonna mix that up. And again, with this one, I feel like it might need a little bit of that flex gel to just kind of loosen it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that oops, right away. Just a little bit of flex. You guys, as you're mixing, you might notice that you get a little bit of glitter down into your containers. If you prefer, you can have a separate container that you just use for when you're mixing. But honestly, if the glitter falls to the bottom, it's not gonna contaminate your product at all because you're not gonna be scraping that up from the bottom. It'll settle down and you won't have to worry about picking it up when you're doing maybe a solid color or pink and white or anything like that. It'll just settle to the bottom. So don't worry too much about that. But if you wanna have a separate container that you use for mixing your glitters, you can do that. All right, so I am really liking how this turned out. Kind of a gold with a hint of champagne to it. So I like that. I feel like my consistency is about where I want it. All right, so we've got our next nail here. Again, I'm gonna put my form on there. I put my little tab on the back. Get my form right up underneath there. Okay, so again, I'm gonna start with my clear base gel. And I'm gonna start with my clear sculptor. Okay, so again, we're doing a clear nail, so I'm gonna use my clear underneath. So I'm just gonna, again, come in, connect that to my natural nail, and then just start to build out my extension. clean out my gel brush here make sure that there's nothing in there just yet I'm gonna tuck up those sides into the corner there and then again pull forward to clean up that edge clean out my brush same thing tuck up into the edge clean out my brush and then we'll pull forward now as you're working if you do see that you have any little air bubbles in the nail before you cure that, make sure to just kind of poke into it, pop that air bubble. That way you're not gonna cure that air bubble into the nail. All right, we'll go ahead and put that in the light for a quick 30 second freeze. Okay, so that extension is cured out. Again, I'm gonna come back with my clear base gel. We're gonna go from cuticle down to the free edge. I've got a little bit more than what I needed on there. All right, so again, from the cuticle to the free edge, get that little piece of fuzz off the nail. Making sure that I get up as close to my cuticle area as I can without touching that skin. If you do accidentally get product on the skin before you um, before you cure it, just go through with cuticle pusher, your magic wand, an orangement stick, whatever you need to do, just to make sure that you do clean that product off the skin. So that way it's not curing and it won't interfere with your adhesion. I'm gonna add just a little bit more product right at my seam, just to make sure I have a good connection. I'm not adding a lot, just enough to make sure that it, that it touches. And then just kind of blend it out to the free edge. All right, again, we'll give this a quick 30 second cure. Okay, so we've got our nail cured out. I'm gonna take off my form, just kind of pinch it underneath that extension. You really wanna make sure that you've completely released that form before you pull your form away so that you don't end up breaking off that extension. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of our glitter mixture here and I'm just gonna spread a thin layer on that nail. 
Again, right now at this point, we're not trying to build up any thickness to the nail. We're not trying to build up structure. We're just going to give our nail just a coating. Now the majority of our nail is going to be our little gold coins, our little gold polka dots. So again, I'm not going to worry if my application on my glitter here is perfect. I do want to make sure that I'm getting product up close to my cuticle and my sides because when we put our little confettis on the nail, we don't necessarily want our confettis all the way to the edge because sometimes what can happen is when you put those confettis all the way to the edge of the nail, you might end up filing them off. Okay, so I'm going to keep them more towards the center of the nail and I'm going to fill in my sides with my glitter. So it's all going to kind of start to blend together. Okay, let's grab our little gold polka dots here. I'm going to put these on my table towel and I'm going to just make sure that they're not all stuck together. And I'm going to make sure my brush is cleaned out. I don't have anything on this wipe, it's just a dry wipe. So I'm just kind of getting all of that glitter out of my brush. I don't want too much gel on the brush either. I just want a little tiny bit of gel on there, just enough to be able to, whoops, just enough to be able to pick up those confettis. So we're just gonna kind of place them down into that nail wherever we want them. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of load up this nail. I'm gonna get a lot of those confettis on there. Just kind of tuck them down into that gel. It's okay if they overlap. It's okay if they're kind of doubled up. Because remember, this is our pot of gold. A pot of gold is very random and there's a lot of coins everywhere. So just kind of tuck them all into that nail. And again, you can kind of see I'm keeping them a little farther away from the sides so that they're not all the way down into my edge, so that I'm not gonna end up filing those out. All right. It's not quite sticking to your brush. Take a little bit more gel in your brush, and then you can use that stickiness to pick them up. Just a few more here. All right, I think I have almost what I want and then I'm just going to kind of come back through just to make sure resituate anything fill in any spaces that you want to fill in if you feel like you need any more on there go ahead and add and I'm just going to kind of again look from down the free edge or look from the side see if anything's pointing up if anything's poking up at all just kind of press it down flatten it out a little bit so that again when we cap this we're not gonna end up filing off those edges of our gold coins, okay? We'll get that back into the light. And again, a quick 30 second freeze. Okay, so our gold coins are cured onto our nail. I'm gonna come back with our build pink and we're gonna cap that nail. Just gonna seal in all of those gold coins, little gold polka dots. And again, I'm using the Build Pink because I like how the pink tint just kind of brightens everything up. Gives it a little bit more, just a little more kick to the nail. And as I'm working my product, I'm just kind of floating my brush over the surface. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the brush. Just kind of barely touching it just to let that brush move the product for me. Again, I'm going to just drag up to my arch and add just a little bit more product right in that stress area. Make sure I've got that built up. So again, I'm going to kind of check around my edges, see where my little gold coins are, and make sure I have everything capped really well so again, I don't file off my gold coins. I think I've got that just about where I want it. I've got my arch in the right place. Just gonna let that 
self level just a second and then we will get this into the light and we'll do a full 60 second cure on this one okay so our nail is all cured out i'm going to use our swipe and we're going to just remove that tacky surface And then I'm going to go through, I am going to file out these two nails. I'm going to do two more nails. Whoops, I'm going to pop that one back on. So I'm going to file out these two nails. I'm going to do two more nails. And then I'm going to show you the rainbow so that we have the rainbow at the end. So we have the pot of gold at the end of our rainbow. Okay. And we also have our gold glitter here. So let's come back to our catch-all jar. We'll take that, add in our gold. If you wanna add in those confettis, go ahead and add in those confettis. I'm just gonna add that gold in there. We'll give that another quick mix. And now we've got kind of a, still just kind of that champagne-y, I don't, just a really fun color now. just kind of a lot of hologram that I'm seeing some blues in there not sure where that came from but really pretty color okay so I've gone through I finished up the rest of our set I just sculpted this first one just in our concealer pink gel and then I just did our second design on that our pot of gold came out really really bright and shiny so on this last one what we're going to do is our rainbow so that we've got our pot of gold at the end of the rainbow what i'm using today is a lot of our mission control gel paint so i've got our red orange yellow green blue and i'm actually going to mix my own purple so i'm going to start with that just so you can see that so i'm going to take a little bit of the blue and then a little bit of our pink. I'm gonna make sure I clean off my spatula before I go into my next color. Just grab a little bit of the pink and a little bit of these colors go a long way. They are very pigmented. So a little bit goes a long way. Now, normally when you're mixing colors, red and blue make purple um, and you can mix the red and the blue. I like the kind of that hot pink um, I feel like it gives it just a little bit of a richer, kind of a purple violet. So it's a personal preference if you want to mix the red and the blue together. I just like the combination of the blue and the pink, kind of that neon pink. All right, so I've got my purple. All right, so we're going to do kind of an ombre rainbow. I'm going to just set this off to the side for a second. So I'm basically going to do some stripes all the way down the nail and I'm going to blend them together so that it just kind of flows as just kind of a really pretty rainbow ombre. Now when you're doing your colors, you kind of want to think how much space do I want to fill? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six colors with my purple, okay? So I'm going to kind of think I'm going to fill about half of the nail with three of those colors and then the other half will be the rest of the three, so three and six. Okay, so before we go into our design, I'm going to start with a coat of my protein bond. This way our colors are going to have a really good bond to that nail. We're not going to have to worry about any product chipping. That protein bond is going to give us just a really good anchor for our product. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with my red and I'm just using our striper brush. And I'm going to work kind of at a diagonal. So I'm going to start up in that top left corner just working my product up into that cuticle area and this is where the striper brush comes in really nice is i'm just going to use just the point of it to get right up around that cuticle again you want to get as close to your cuticle as you can without touching that cuticle okay. so that's going to be our first color i'm just going to wipe the excess paint off on a dry wipe here and then i'm going to come in with my mixing tile, I'm gonna use a little bit of our Mani-Q Top Coat. You can use whatever clear gel you want to, but have a clear gel on your mixing tile. That way you can clean out your gel brush or you can clean out your art brush in that gel 
without having to use any solvents. It's really important. You don't want to use any solvents, acetone, alcohol, anything like that on your brush because that's going to dry out your brush. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to use a dry wipe and wipe that excess out of there. Okay. Let's come in with our second color. So my second color is our orange. I'm going to bring that right up almost next to my red. If it touches, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's fine too. We're just going to blend these together. I'm going to thicken that up just a little bit there. Because again, I'm going to have three colors in this first half of my nail. All right, now here is kind of a trick. I don't know about you guys, but every so often I have an old or an old detailer brush that maybe it's been used and abused a little bit and the bristles get a little bit frayed. Those frayed bristles, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but those frayed bristles work really, really well for blending and doing ombres. So I'm just going to start kind of in between my colors and I'm just going to work back and forth. You can barely see those bristles but it's just gonna start to blend my colors together. And it almost works kind of like a fan brush, but it's just very delicate, so I feel like it really helps to blend those colors really nice together. Okay, so we have our red and our orange blended together, and then again, I'm gonna clean this out. Usually with the striper brush, because there's so few bristles on there, it usually will come clean just by wiping it on a dry lint-free wipe. Okay, we're gonna take our third color, this is gonna be our yellow, and we're gonna bring that in. Now it's a personal preference. If you wanna go through and you wanna add all of your colors, so do your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, all the way down, and then come back with your blender, you're welcome to do that. I personally feel like I get a more clean blend if I go just a couple of colors at a time. because so you wanna make sure that you're not blending too many colors together because then you end up getting that brown color. Okay. So we wanna keep our colors kind of separate. Clean out that yellow. And then just wipe that off on our, on our wipe. Go back to my frayed detailer brush and just start to blend. Now you do want to be kind of patient with this. It's not going to blend instantly, but just lightly kind of keep working through it and you'll get that really pretty blend. And also you guys, if it doesn't blend perfectly, it's a rainbow. It doesn't have to blend perfectly. You blend until you're comfortable with how that color looks and it's the rainbow that you like. I'm gonna take out just a little bit of that extra paint out of my brush. I'm gonna blend a little bit more of that yellow back into my orange. And we'll just keep blending until we get it where we want it. All right, I think I am actually kind of liking that. There we go. Sometimes you do a little bit more than you think you need and then it hits it just perfect. Okay, let's come back with our green. And the same exact technique. We're just gonna blend the yellow and the green together. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do my blue. Just so you can kind of see, you can add the colors together all at once if you want to. Okay, we'll come back, start blending that green back to the blue, or back to the yellow. bristles a little bit closer together. Okay, 
I think I want to put just a little bit more yellow back in. So I'm going to clean out the green from my brush. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of yellow on those bristles. Just right back in there. I had just a little bit of green that came too far back in there, so I wanted to just kind of take that out. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to clean out that yellow out of my brush. Let's blend the blue and the green. Blue and green tend to blend really, really well. I really like how those come together. Then our final color that we're going to use is the purple that we mixed up. Bring that right down to the end. And I like a little bit more of the purple on the end. We did the three colors on the top half and the three colors on the bottom half, but I feel like because the, um, the purple is right down on that point, if you had less purple, it probably wouldn't show up as well. So I like to put a little bit more purple, give it a little bit more space. And same thing, just gonna blend. Actually, I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue on my brush here. Come right in between there. Bring that blue and the purple together. Get that really nice blend. So once you've got all of your colors blended, I'm gonna come back in and just kind of touch up a couple of these edges because sometimes with your blending, you might not get all the way to the edge. So I'm just gonna make sure everything is coated all the way to the edge. And then I can touch up if there's any little spots that maybe I feel like I need a little bit more color, I can touch up those spots. My green all the way to the side here. And add just a little bit more yellow. I think I might even want a little bit more orange in there. But it's really up to you. How you want to blend your colors, you blend until you like them. don't need any more orange. I think I like how that that turned out. All right, so once you have your colors how you want them, I'm going to add just one last little little hint of color. And I'm going to use our Okay, again, those of you that had the crypto glitter from before, I'm just going to use a little tiny bit of that. I'm gonna take, while our product is still wet, I'm gonna take a, just a little makeup brush and I'm just gonna do a little bit of a sprinkle. Just a little bit of that gold to kind of tie it in with the rest of our nails. We'll go ahead and cure that. I'll top coat it and then you can see the finished product. Okay, so our color is cured into place. I'm gonna use our manicure top coat and because I've got glitter on there, I'm probably going to do two coats of top coat just so I don't feel any of the texture of that glitter. One coat is probably going to be okay, but just in case, I don't want to feel anything poking out of the top coat or anything that's going to cause my client to pick or kind of work on their nail at all. So we'll do one coat, we'll freeze that into place for a quick 30 seconds and then we'll do a second coat. Okay, so our nail is done curing. Let's go ahead and do our second coat of top coat. Just to really seal in all of those glitters, make sure that there's no texture that our client is gonna feel. You can use whichever top coat you prefer. It's totally up to you. I just really like the high shine of the manicure top coat. So it's just totally up to you. Use whatever works for you. So 
So we're gonna do one final cure of 60 seconds. Okay, so our nails are all cured out. I'm gonna use our manicure cleanser to remove that top tacky surface. I've cleansed and finished all of the other nails as well. Now I'm just gonna check right around the edges. Anytime I use a glitter, I always like to check around the edges just to make sure that there's no sharp edges or anything that, again, my client would wanna pick at. So I'm just gonna run my buffer right around that edge so I don't feel anything else. So there is our pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Hopefully you guys will give some of these techniques a try and have a happy St. Patty's Day. got endless amounts of videos, so do not stop now. Click, watch, click, watch, keep that going, and don't forget to give us one of these.